I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job. The working environment needs to be fun. Everything you're doing in life needs to be fun. How do we support our own institutions? How do we support our own businesses? We feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any business. themselves go what are they doing right what's good welcome to another episode of his black is lit i'm your host town here on location at the uatv studio and today i'm joined by the brilliantly black and talented mr obed lemon hey how you doing today i'm doing very well thank you for having me thank you for stopping by the show with us we're excited to talk about your filmmaking career and all the brilliant things that you have going on uh, but for starters, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you're from originally. Um, I like to start by saying my hometown. I mean, besides my name, my name is Obed Lamy, obviously. Um, I was born in 1992 in a small hometown in Haiti. Haiti, for context, is a small Caribbean island. So the, my hometown is called Petit Guave. There is so much of me in that place. And there is so much of that place in me. This is where I grew up, where I go to school, to church, I do everything. Um, yeah, I've been in, uh, in the US or specifically in Arkansas for two years and a half now. I came here in March 2019, studied English for a little while and then studied my master program in journalism at the University of Arkansas. This is also where I learned um, documentary filmmaking because be before that I worked for some newspaper in my country as well as some international outlets in Canada and also in the United States. So yeah, from a family of four kids, I'm the only boy and yes. That's cool. So what was one of the first things that made you interested in becoming a filmmaker? I don't think I, uh, I have ever been interested in becoming a filmmaker because I didn't grow up with a TV set at home. And actually, watching film is not my first hobby. I watch film for you know, academic and professional purpose. I think I chose to become a journalist. I don't know, I love people. I love to know more about people, and the more you know about people, the, know, the more you know about what's going on in the world. Not just the news and, you know, breaking news, but personal stories. Like, you can, you know, be walking on the street and you ask one person a silly question and it takes you to a whole story. I'm always amazed by that. But when I started, to, when I, you know, start, you know, making film here in the U.S., one thing I came up with during this kind of introspection is that my father is a teacher, he's a public school teacher. He's been working in a different hometown. He would spend the week and come back on Friday evening and go back to teach again every Monday morning or Sunday afternoon. So we spent the biggest part of our lives, me and my sister with my mom. She was a stay-at-home mom. And every night, she would tell us story of her childhood, story also about politics, because she grew up under the dictatorship in my country. So that was my introduction to storytelling. Of course, I didn't have the technology, but if you are making film, you don't necessarily need to have, uh, you know, the best camera. What you need is a story, and story can be everywhere or anywhere. So I feel like though I didn't grow up with, you know, this sort of equipment or anyone in my family has never been in the film industry, but I did have my storytelling teacher who is my mom, and from her I've learned so much, you know, not only the passion for storytelling, but also so much about the history of my country. So when did your passion for storytelling become a passion for filmmaking? I guess it's here in Arkansas. You know, I enrolled in the journalism master's program and one of the course I saw in 
the curriculum was documentary filmmaking, I was like, oh, let me give it a try. I remember the first day in that class, the documentary production class, was also my first day in grad school. It was very intimidating because that first day I had classmates with different accents from different parts of the United States. I was the only international student. I could barely understand what they were saying. And it was also intimidating because we were talking a little bit about some technical aspect of filmmaking. I knew a little bit about camera because I was a journalist. I used to work for a multimedia platform, but I didn't know specific language about filmmaking. So I was like, what I'm doing here? It's, it's, it, it was overwhelming. And right after that, I started to do my homework, listening to every kind of podcast about filmmaking and reading and, and you know, signing up for, you know, some online platform about documentary filmmaking and watching documentaries and finally find a little bit my way. My professor, Colin Thurston, she's been very supportive also. I could, you know, show up in office hour. We speak for, or we spoke for long hours and she, you know, was with me all the several of the way. So, and I did for a class assignment, my first documentary. And it turned out very well, and that's when I realized, oh, I can do something. I can do something different. And now I realize what I love about documentary compared to journalism is that it's uh, more personal. You can develop more strong and personal, stronger and personal connection with the people you are working with. I spent years working with people. You have to be patient. You have to know. You have to get to know your subject. It's not that you are trying to exploit their story. You need to understand more than the 20 minutes that will be on camera, so you can be very honest um, as a filmmaker and also respectful to that person's story because it's not, you know, it's it's not just you are like putting images and sound together. It's a person's story. It's so intimate and so valuable that you have to do your best as a filmmaker to respect that. That's powerful. What were some of the steps that you took to change from a journalist into a filmmaker? What were some of the first steps that you took? There might have, of course, there are many, many similarities, but it take a big shift to move from journalism to documentary filmmaking because uh, in terms of um, process, it's not the same. For example, as a journalist, you have to be very objective, although objectivity is such um, you know, an illusion. But you have to take a step back from the subject and from the people you are dealing with. Um, but as a filmmaker, you need to have a voice. As a journalist, you don't have a voice unless you are doing, you know, um, you are doing news, you are commenting news on TV or you are writing a guest essay, for example. But as a filmmaker, you do need to have a voice so you can tell a different story because now your film will be interesting because there is a personal voice, there is a personal perspective that people have not seen before. As a filmmaker, you can, there is an infinite world of possibility. So when I first started, I still had this journalistic mindset that I have to get the fact and be straightforward, but I had to free myself from these restrictions and almost start a new, I don't know, way of thinking and doing things as a storyteller. Uh, that's, a, that's a key insight. Um, so what were some of the challenges that you faced in changing and shifting your mentality to more of a filmmaker? And, and having more freedom in how you produce? Um, yeah, the challenges were like, do you, how do you deal with, you know, facts and opinion? Because most of the time when you are 
a journalist you want the facts for example if i am interviewing someone about a specific story i need to you know fact check and make sure that you know everything is can be verified as a filmmaker you do have to do that but it's more i give you a vessel so you can tell your story and people might feel how they want to feel about it people might agree with it people might disagree with it but at the end of the day it's gonna be your story and i use a little bit of my perspective so we can frame it and share it to you know to other people but yes that has been very very intense in terms of how do i get the skills but also how do i get the stories to tell because i'm not from here so you know the typical trajectory of international student is that you come to these big countries you sit down in your classroom you do your assignments your reading you get the grades and you might go back home but for me as a journalism student and as a filmmaker i had to get out of the university community to reach out to other people because you can't be a filmmaker if you don't have a story to tell what kind of story do you tell you don't know the people you don't know the language also are you like good enough to ask questions and understand when there is a very obvious language barrier it was very intimidating so in navigating your challenges um tell me one of some of the early successes that you experienced as a filmmaker <laughs> well, um, I think things happen in a way that I didn't expect. For example, I can say the fact that my first documentary ever has been screened in maybe 10 film festival is a major success. Uh, the first screening actually, or the first film festival actually was in, took place in maybe October 2020 in Little Rock. And that was during the pandemic. So. It, it was a day I will forever remember. The first time I saw my film in my name on a big screen. And yeah, I can say this is a success. But what happened with success is also, at least in my situation, is that, okay, you get uh, the awards and you get um, some encouragement from different people, friends and professors and everybody. Now, what's next? So my, my life is that, I spend so much time and energy in making things happen. Once it happened, just for a minute, I'm happy. And the following minute, I'm like, okay, what I'm gonna do now? But I'm very grateful that I have um, had this experience and these you know, successes because it is really encouraging. And it just you know, tells me that this is something I can do. But once it, it, it get it got accepted in you know those film festival where I, these people they don't know me, they don't know the context I, in which I did I made the film. They don't know about my experience in filmmaking. If they accept the film, that means it's good, you know. So, so yeah, I can say this is a success. But my success is also besides you know what people can see is also the relationships you build with people because again there is no way you can be a good filmmaker if you don't have a good story and there is no way you can have a good story if people don't want to share their story and to me though the process can be very draining and um, exhausting and overwhelming it can be also very joyful because you get to see the world differently it's not every day somebody's gonna sit down in front of like a big crowd to say, this is who I am, this is what I've experienced. I don't take that for granted. I value time and energy and those things people have, you know, shared with me. And I, you know, try to always be, to pay respect the way I'm making the film, but also to stay in touch with these people because this is not people I'm just exploiting their story and move forward with my career these are people i want to know what they are doing i want to know what's next i i yeah this is something i very i enjoy very much also and i can say this is a success sorry i can say this is a success because it's not everybody coming to america 
as a student can have a chance to create that community and being accepted by so many people. I am very grateful for that. That's awesome. Um, what advice would you give to a young person who's aspiring to become a filmmaker? Uh, uh, there is so much to share um, in terms of advice. Um, there can be, um, I don't know, the first thing is you need to make sure that you love, not necessarily filmmaking, but storytelling. Because people can be very inspired or excited when you know they see maybe someone like me, maybe young people in my country can be excited when they see someone like me making these things. If I want people to see the process, waiting the outcome. Because if you focus too much on the outcome, you can get lost and it's not easy. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but people need to understand there is a process and you need to follow the process. I didn't, you know, I, I never dreamed to become a filmmaker. It just so happened that I love storytelling and filmmaking is a way of storytelling. I, you know, do the work it took and to make films right now. Like, you really need to make sure this is something you love because it's so difficult, it's so exhausting. I don't know, the next thing is gonna be, I don't know, maybe learn the skills it takes. And you will never learn everything at once. You will learn much more from your mistakes. For example, in terms of, you know, some small technical mistake, I have, you know, learned, for example, to always transfer the files from my SD the same to my you know drive or the same day of the filming because if you forget you can have something to shoot the following day and you didn't re remember to remove the file and you erase everything those things I don't know no one told me that before you have most of the time to make the mistake and realize wow this is crazy um, and even if you get a university degree in you know filmmaking there will be always things to learn be curious also because most of the time the most interesting the most interesting stories come out of a weird question stories come from everywhere and anytime you really need to have an open mind and open also your eyes about what's going on around you um or what has been said and you want to bring a different perspective because as much uh, you need to as much you need to get the skills like the technical skills whether it's filming or editing or sound recording you also need to make sure you have a story to tell you only make a film because a film is the only way you can tell that story because if you have a story, you can create a podcast, you can write a book, you can draw something about it, you can, there's many, many ways to tell a story. You only start and press record on your camera because this is the only way you can tell that story. Go out and make films because uh, I don't think you can be a filmmaker if you don't make films. I don't think you can be a good cinematographer if you never use the camera and you will see that the difference between what you what you read if you you know how, if you buy book to to um to get your skills if you want to watch youtube videos you would see a big difference because between what these people are saying and what you will be experiencing in the field that's it i mean you got to do it to be to be considered a filmmaker you got to make films that is true um so where can we find out more about your films and connect with you as a filmmaker? Um, I'm on social media. I use Instagram a lot. Yeah, over the past two years, uh, my Instagram is Obedlami, O-B-E-D-L-A-M-Y. There is this black and white photo, big hair, and I'm also on Twitter. I think I have a website, obedlami.com, O-B-E-D-L-A-M-Y.com. 
So yes, I'm still working on you know portfolio and putting things together. But yeah, people can follow me on social media and can visit my website and yeah we can walk we can talk we can do so many cool things together awesome well, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to stop by the show with us today uh, we're inspired by everything that you're doing and more importantly we're excited to see you be a visionary that's creating change for people like you and me so definitely keep doing what you're doing um up next on this black is lit we're gonna have another edition of get out your feelings and our word of the day What's good? It's your boy Town the Hood Scholar. It's time to get out your feelings. opportunities for success now than at any other time in history. Social and communications transformations require us to clearly define our metrics for success. People chase their dreams every day, but chasing your dreams isn't the end of your journey. Bringing your dreams to life is a result of hard work and determination, but when they come true and you achieve your mission, your countenance gleams. Check this out to see what I mean. There's a gleam, man. There's a gleam. Let's get the gleam, all right? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Basically, fulfilled eyes gleam with passion. Dream chasing only takes you to a destination. Gleam chasing means the fulfillment of your purpose. Timing. Now, the choice judgment or control of when something should be done. A true visionary knows timing is everything. <laughs>